The serenity of northwestern Connecticut has attracted vacationers for years. But on a summer's weekend, for the past six years, the tranquility at Lime Rock Park has been shattered by the battles for American Le Mans Series championships. You can't be patient now. If the door opens, you, you got to put it in there. Three abreast down into one, and Beretta both for this goes through on the inside. He's by. That looked almost easy. Same spot. Inga does it again. Oh! And on front of Fowler, a problem with the GT2 car. That's a 23 car. He just loses it big time. I don't think there's any contact there, but there's the contact. Oh, big, oh, big shot. Oh. beautiful Berkshire Mountains of Northwestern Connecticut, the home of Lime Rock Park. The park, as it's known, has hosted world-class road racing since 1957, and we have beautiful weather here today for Speed's live coverage of round five of the American Le Mans Series in 2010, the Northeast Grand Prix. Hello everyone, I'm Brian Till along with Dorsey Schrader, Calvin Fish, Jamie Howe, and Chris Neville. And Dorsey Schrader, I know, has certainly raced at Lime Rock Park before. He has won here. And Dorsey, I think you probably have crashed here once or twice as well. But tell the folks at home, what is it about Lime Rock Park that keeps the crowds coming back year after year? And what makes it so challenging for the drivers? Well, Lime Rock Park is action-packed. I mean, it's the shortest circuit that the American Le Mans Series races on at just a mile and a half in length. Couple that to the high-speed nature of this place, and you have nothing but action. Best passing place is down into turn one. That's not to say that they won't take attempts all the way around the racetrack. And playing well in traffic is what they need to do. Will they do it? Probably not. The other part of this is your pit stop strategy. By the time you slow your race car down, get it into pit lane to your stall and get back out, that's 30 seconds. Add 25 seconds more for tires if you put a new fresh set on and fuel. You're going to have about a 70 second pit stop by the time you're done. The problem is, Prototype cars lap here in 48 seconds. If you stop under green, you're going to go lap down. More on the prototype story. Let's talk to my buddy here, Calvin Fish. Well, Dorsey, certainly the bragging rights here today in the prototype class could come down to the two locally based teams, Highcroft Racing and Dyson Racing. Highcroft have a great run going here at Lime Rock. They won here in 2008 and overall, and they also had the lead here late in the going last year until a puncture really spoiled the party. For Dyson, well, they've been race winning races here since the mid-80s. But when we look at the head-to-head -head battles this year, it has certainly been sensational stuff. Here at Long Beach, David Bram gets around the Dyson car on his way to Highcroft's first victory of the season. A few weeks later at Mazda Raceway, Laguna Seca, here it is, Guy Smith taking the Dyson Mazda-powered car around the outside of Marino Franchitti to take the lead. Unfortunately, mechanical gremlins late in the going cost them the chance of victory. But it's not just between these two teams here today. Klaus Graf yesterday in qualifying was simply sensational, sliding his way around this racetrack to claim an outside berth on the front row. But this is not the only battle out here today. For more on the GT class, let's get down to Jamie Howe. Well, Calvin, the GT storyline so far in 2010 have really written themselves. There are more cars, more teams, and more manufacturers. So far, though, it's been between the number 62, Risi Comtizioni Ferrari of Jimmy Bruni and Jamie Malo, and the number 45, Flying Lizard Porsche of York Bergmeister and Patrick Long. Today is the Lizard starting on pole, but it's Risi who leads the championships. In the manufacturer's standings, BMW holds the point. They're the only manufacturer to finish on the podium in each race of the season, so don't count them out. The battles are intense, and it's still an open championship, but for more on the rest of the field, here's Chris Neville. Well, it's a rare occasion that a points championship leader pulls out mid-season, but because of philosophical differences between Juan Gonzalez and Alex Job, the 80 and the 81 will not start today. In their absence, that gives the opportunity to Henri Richard and Andy Lally to potentially leave with the championship points lead. And don't overlook the Black Swan car. They've won the last two races, and they're charging up that points chart. In LMPC, Christoph Bushu and Scott Tucker had an 11-point lead after their victory at Salt Lake City. But in this morning's practice, Bushu severely damaged the 55. That car will not start, so Tucker and Bushu will likely be split in the championship. And keep an eye out for Gunnar Jeanette in the 99. He is second in the points, but will have to charge through the field after shifter problems in qualifying. Wow, the story's starting already. We have not even dropped the green flag yet, and the weather has cooperated today. It has been raining all weekend long. Let's take an opportunity while we have it to introduce you to our four class pole sitters. 
Simon Pagano from Montmorillon, France. Hi, I'm David Brabham, and you know where I'm from. Earth. Christophe Bouchu, Paris, France. Scott Tucker, Leewood, Kansas. Hi, I'm Patrick Long from Oak Park, California, currently living in Clearwater, Florida. Hi, I'm Jörg Bergmeister from Langenfeld, Germany. Hi, I'm Jerome Bleekemoren and I'm from the Netherlands. Hi, I'm Tim Pappas from Boston. They're your class pole sitters and need to talk about Christoph Bouchu and Scott Tucker. They're 55 qualified on the pole. That probably adds a little more insult to the injury there, Calvin. It does, and as Chris mentioned, uh, Scott Tucker will see action today in the 95 machine. Christoph Bouchu will not, so you'd have to assume there will be no points on the board for Bouchu at the end of the day. And if Tucker can get that car to 70%, it'll leap ahead in the standings. Well, guys, yesterday was a completely wet day, so there was no dry running here. So this morning was the only time that teams could work on their setups. A lot of these teams are saying that it could be 10 or 15 laps into this race to see if they nailed that setup. So this, this early going of this race is going to be very interesting to see. Did you hit it or did you miss it? That's going to be a wild one today. As Chris just said, no dry running. We'll have our outboard shots for you. We're going to have onboards as well. The number one, the Highcroft entry, the Ferrari there, Extreme Speed Motorsports. 16, the Mazda entry from Dyson, and then the LMP Challenge car, the 95, Andy Wallace on board, and both BMWs, so we'll have some great shots for you there. Through the downhill, looking for green. Side by side, on the pole, up front, green, green. one, and you hear green, 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 the green flag waves. The governor of the state of Connecticut waves the green flag, and we're racing, and whoa, wow. John Field lifts loose there, and Dyson in the 16 takes over the points. Wow, they saw the turbocharged cars just go straight to the front there. Dyson leads the way, Chris Dyson, but look at this, Johnny Cogger looking for a way through in the Drayson machine, the pole sitting car, all the way back to fourth, just as we saw at Miller. Cold tires right now, guys, not up to pressures yet either. The car's darting around a lot, gotta get a little bit of extra credence from these brake zones. You saw John Field there really squirrely under braking. He's run the harder compound Dunlop tie here to start the race. Hopefully it'll come good longer in the run. Dyson knows this track well. They consider it their home track, and he will lead lap one as Dyson out of the West Bend hairpin, or uh, chicane, I should say, through the downhill and onto the front straightaway. Does Johnny Cocker have anything for him? The V10 singing comes. in the back of the low into the braking zone for one. Chris blocks to the inside, takes the defensive oh. line there. Cocker looked for the long way around, but couldn't make it stick. This is a big prop for Simon Pagino with a straight line speed, Dorsey, of these turbocharged cars up front. It's going to be a long day for Simon. No question about that. And you can make an outside pass in Big Ben down in turn one here if you can stick it alongside. I just checked in with Michelin, guys. The track temperature right now, 110 degrees. You mentioned it rained all weekend long. The highest in any session up until right now was only 88 degrees. So very different conditions for all of the teams right now when it comes to tire strategy. And that really is a problem for these tire manufacturers. Right now we have Dunlop leading from Michelin, from Dunlop, from Michelin. And a lot of times these teams will run a slightly softer compound on the right side and a harder compound on the left side because the predominantly right-hand corners, the left side really takes most of the wear and most of the load. So there's really been a gamble uh, right now amongst the engineers on what do you run. Yesterday was effectively rained out. Some of these cars are new configuration. They don't know what to run. They don't know what they're going to see 20, 30 minutes into this event. Johnny Cocker continuing to press Chris Dyson. Two very different cars, one to an LMP category configuration the other to an LMP1 so different weights on these two cars different power plants as well the battle rages in GT as well there's Ooh. the 45 oh real contact. loose and he made contact with the 89 LMP challenge car and you can tell that it is wet that is indeed the 45 there Patrick Long behind the wheel in the 89 the LMP challenge car looks like he got the worst of it Brian Wong in the 89 this was a big concern for the flying lizard team this morning I spoke to Thomas Bland their strategies he said I'm really concerned about our grid position yes we're on the pole but we're right in the mix of the LMP C cars and our car will probably come to alive a little bit faster wow Johnny Cocker I think guys he has the faster car he's just Chris Dyson running on the inside Cocker's got to go the long way tracks going to be wet up here you saw all of that water come out of Wong's car as it came onto this no-name straight on the back it's gonna be damp you can see all the water to the outside if you put a wheel off here today you're either gonna find a wall or you're gonna find a swamp looking back right now it's Dyson over Johnny Cocker John Field and Simon Pagino 
that one had started on the pole, that beautiful green and black Patron Highcroft entry started on the pole, has dropped to fourth. The battles from Lime Rock Park, round five in the American Le Mans Series, they have heated up from the very drop of the green. Stay with us. out of their cars. It's Bridgestone or nothing. It started with two simple words. And now it's time to join in. Announcing the Claim Your Mazda Summer Sales Event. Enjoy the high resale value of Mazda 3. Mazda 6, the driver's alternative to camera. Or the seven passenger Mazda CX-9. All available with 0% APR financing for 60 months, plus no monthly payments until October 2010. So why compromise? Hurry in and claim your Mazda today. Attention collectors, Ford has just authorized the National Motor Museum Mint to release this exclusive die-cast replica of the 1948 Ford F1 pickup. The first in the F-series of trucks that became the best-selling vehicles in the world. It has amazing details and parts that move. A regular $30 value, now yours for only $10. Plus, as a free gift, you'll also receive this precision die-cast 1956 Ford F100 pickup. According to many, the best-looking Ford pickup ever built. Another $30 value, it's yours free, just for shipping and handling. Don't miss this unique collector's opportunity. Two of the most popular Ford trucks ever both with certificates of authenticity, a $60 value for the special price of only $10 plus shipping and handling. Don't delay. To order your Ford pickups, have your credit card ready and call 1-800-217-3536. That's 1-800-217-3536. Don't wait. Call now. Speed's coverage of the American Le Mans Series is brought to you by BMW, the ultimate driving machine, and by New Finish, tough enough to be called the once a year car polish. It is a beautiful day indeed here at Lime Rock Park and we have a new leader, the number eight, the green, the coupe, the Lola, powered by the big V10 in back, Johnny Cocker behind the wheel, sharing that with Lord Paul Drayson. Cocker has gotten past Chris Dyson. Now he has set sail, guys. Chris Dyson has got a problem with the car. Take a look at how this all sets up as they come down the front straightaway here. Dyson, of course, the 16 car to the inside. In the brake zone, he's, he's starting to have difficulty. Look at the back of the car on fire. That's coming straight out of the exhaust pipe, out of the turbocharger. I think what we can probably expect to find out is that the car has lost its turbocharger. 16 on pit road. Jamie. Well, I'm at the other end of pit lane. I just watched the car pull down pit, pull down the pit road. I'm going to head down to the see if I can find anything out, but I think you might be right, Dorsey. This team certainly not having the luck at their hometown track they were hoping for. Well, when you see that flame on a turbo car right coming out the back, the, uh, the turbocharger is just short proximity in front of that exhaust tailpipe. And uh, with all of that fire coming out, Usually it's a turbocharger seal that goes bad and then it starts feeding itself oil. The oil burns, obviously, and the turbocharger would need to be replaced. That's a lengthy deal. I, I don't know that they'll even attempt that. Do anything yet, Mike? Wait, do you see anything? No, I don't see anything. There's a little bit of oil. Big disappointment Copy. for this team. They won the P2 class here last year. Of course, P2 and yeah, P1 is now the one prototype class down the this year. Straight, and all of a sudden, the power just started to drop. It wasn't like it was tightened up or anything, but it was like literally like the boost started slowing down yep. it was a problem. I think you're right, Dorsey. It sounds like a turbo. He said it just felt like the boost started going down, and that's going to happen as the turbo goes away. There's other things that it could be as well, but that's a classic uh, first sign of a turbo failure like that when it when it just starts to belch straight flame out the back. They, uh, they'll look around and, and probably restart it on pit lane and come to some conclusion. And there's other things it could be too, but 
that's my first guess. And certainly disappointment for this team. They did not have a particularly good finish at Salt Lake City where they lost the shaft on an oil pump and that dropped them out. They did not finish there. So disappointment for Johnny Cocker though. This is how tight it is. Four classes working here on the mile and a half bull ring that is Lime Rock Park. You see Cocker working past the BMW and one of the extreme speed motorsports Ferraris. BMW is trying to recover. They qualified very poorly in the wet here yesterday, but the one two in this morning's warm up session. They have a lot of pace, but bad track position. They're going to have to work some strategy magic, I think, to get to the front. Lime Rock is a racetrack, is a track that you need the utmost of patience. It's a high speed chess game around here. You're always going to have traffic all day long, like we said. And the trick is to pick, stay out of the pitfalls of Lime Rock. In other words, don't let yourself get slowed up in an area where it's going to take half a lap to get around. The only way you can do that is adjust your speed for the flow of traffic. You can see Pat Long really working the wheel there. Coming off Big Ben and Jamie Mello has got around Wolf Hensley. Puts the Risi Competizione Ferrari, the championship leaders, up into second spot. And remember, they have a two-point advantage over Long and Bergmeister in the championship. Haven't taken the lead with their win at Mello recently. You see the corner worker waving furiously back there, that blue flag. That's the passing flag. His arm will fall off before his stays. <laughs> <laughs> Take a break. Hensler drop back to third. You see Johnny Cocker working through the GT field already, putting them a lap down. Hensler with a great qualifying run in the rain, but the team had not been here with their tires last year, so this was a brand new deal without any dry running yesterday. A bit of a disadvantage for the Falcon guys. Chris? Well, the Castro 16 still sitting on pit lane here. They just put the laptop up to the car. They're trying to get a download from the ECU. The team saying that they're thinking about changing the ECU and trying to get it back out on the racetrack. But guys, they are down so many laps right now. It's all about just diagnosing what is wrong with this car, getting it back out there, and seeing if they can potentially try and keep the car going. It's not going to come down to a result. It's just trying to figure out what is the issue so we don't see it later in the year. Well, our guy over Bubba Clark just told me he was listening on that radio and said that they tried to download that ECU. It came up blank with nothing. So now they're also trying to repair or, or replace the, uh, the the PC to see if they can get something out of that car. But I don't think they're going to get what they want. Johnny O'Connell on the back of the 17, then followed by the 61. Pierre Caffer and Mika Salo returning to American Le Mans Series competition for Risi Competizione this weekend. And certainly they don't are not showing any signs of rust from their layoff. Well, I talked to Wolf Hensler in that number 17 Falcon Tire Porsche right after the morning warm-up, and they were significantly down in, this, in the time she's following that practice session. And Wolf told me, you know, I'm going to make the other GT competitors fight for it. I'm not just going to pull over for them, but I'm not going to be overly aggressive either. We're not in this championship. We're still really developing the tire and trying to figure this thing out. So I'm not going to be overly aggressive, but they are going to have to earn it. One thing we know about the Falcon Tire, it's got a good rain tire, doesn't it, boys, is that car was sitting on top of the sheets in the rain. It really, really put some numbers down. This is the story of Lime Rock Park. Look at Pagano trapped in traffic. GT car in front of him. You saw the 63 GT Challenge car in there as well. And this is costing Pagano dearly. It really is. And the problem is he's got a normally aspirated engine. He doesn't have the grunt of some of the other prototype cars. So he's going to fight his way around these cars with a bit more difficulty than the big turbocharger that really just light those engines down this straightaway here and just blast by everyone down the front straightaway. And the HPD package is a Problem momentum for the 37. Yeah, I saw some smoke as he came down the downhill. Oh, oh here's a big crash. problem for the 23. One of the Alex Job entries, Bill Sweedler behind the wheel. Now, this will probably give us a full force caution. As you can see, it's burst the radiator on the front end. He's made contact both front and rear. One thing that Bo Barfield, the chief steward, told me this morning okay, was he'll try okay? and protect the GT class. He doesn't just want to throw the pace car out there and ruin the battle for GT. He's got to look at where the overall leader is, where is the pack of GT cars before he goes yellow, unless there's a big issue. Trying to see where that car is. It was kind of hard to tell there. This is John Field, which we saw the smoke come out of early. And he is in trouble as he's limping his way back toward the I don't know what I got wrong. Right Can now, you guys however? see on the monitor? Well, Dorsey, listening to the 37, John Field reporting to the team that he has a puncture. He's going to be bringing that car to pit lane. So this full course caution couldn't have happened at a better time. Well, good news for John Field. We talk about coming to the pit lane here, costing you a lap. But remember, when we do go full course caution, the pits will be closed until they can get the field sorted out and get it gathered up. So John Field is going to have to circulate around. Can you make it into pit with lane that or not? Tire. But interestingly enough, I don't see one on the left side. All the tires seem to be up. No, I looked up, but he smoked the tire going down the downhill, and he knew immediately something was wrong. I don't Maybe see a puncture, a guys. No, he doesn't have a flat tire, that's for sure. 
some kind of other issue. We'll try and sort this out. <laughs> John Field suffering a bit here at Lime Rock Park, as is Bill Sweedler, who's gone off at the downhill. The first full course caution of the day, but for Johnny Cocker, things are really looking up indeed, and things are heating up. Round five of the American Le Mans Series in Lime Rock Park. Thursday, prime time on Speed is packed with three great original series. All new episode of Pigs All Out. Somebody here is going to win $10,000. From the Mega Track C Max Trackway. The Toy Stop All Wheels. Dangerous Crimes. No, this isn't Disneyland up here. And on an all new episode of Battle of the Supercars. Oh, it's a muscle car slugfest. Three great original series. One action packed night. Thursday night, beginning at 8 Eastern on Speed. This is unlike any car you've ever seen before. This is power with efficiency. This is an interior that exceeds even the promise of the exterior. This is the all new Jaguar XJ. The stunning result of taking a very different road. Every 2011 Jaguar includes best in class Jaguar Platinum coverage with complimentary scheduled maintenance and no cost replacement of wear and tear items. Most people don't even think about their batteries until they're dead. That's why there's a Deltran Battery Tender. The Battery Tender Plus charges your battery to 100%, then automatically maintains it, and they can double the life of your battery. For smaller spaces, grab a Battery Tender Junior. It's lightweight, compact, and easy to use. You need to check out the Battery Tender Waterproof 800. It's completely enclosed, so it's protected from moisture and vibration. Find the world's most advanced battery charger at BatteryTender.com. If you're looking for the inside track on affordable auto and other types of insurance, ride with the General. We can help you cut the cost of insurance with a down payment as low as $59 and a low monthly payment that will take the pressure off your budget. Log on to thegeneral.com now for an instant quote and immediate proof of insurance. Don't end up with a loser, ride with a winner. The best car insurance rates online. Go to the General and save some time. In today's cars, there's self-adjusting cylinders, self-deploying spoilers. Why not a self-cleaning engine? Next generation Pennzoil motor oil cleans out up to 40% of sludge. So turn your engine into a self-cleaning engine and feel the clean. It's like a blast of hydration to your face. New Chic Hydro, with water-activated gel that hydrates your skin as you shave and lasts up to twice as long as ordinary strips, while five blades with skin guards smooth the skin to reduce irritation. It's the best shave for your skin. The new Chic Hydro, free your skin. I have fallen in love with making birdhouses. Honestly, I'd love to do this for the rest of my life, so I have to take care of myself. To keep doing what you love, keep your heart healthy. Cheerios can help. The whole grain oats can help lower cholesterol. It's simple. Love your heart so you can do what you love. The crowd has turned out in force at Lime Rock Park under great skies here, and they were even here yesterday in inclement weather. Lime Rock Park always draws a great crowd, especially when the American Le Mans Series in town. Under full course caution the first time, and cars on pit road. Ready? Yeah. Okay, start it up. This was a big call for the Flying Lizard Boys. Remember, they had the lead in this race. You never want to give up track position, but by stopping now, they should be able to do on just one more stop. They're saying they can do about 70 minutes on a full fuel load. So obviously the strategy is playing out early. Chris, you're at Corvette. Hey guys, the Lizard car came out of pit lane in the lead, but the Ferrari, the Risi car, and the 90 BMW got together in pit lane. It is so tight down here that all, all those cars are coming in and trying to get out. Cars are coming together. Everyone we've spoken to said it is going to be a full contact sport. I saw the front of the three uh, Corvette with some damage on it as well. They're even fighting in pit lane. They certainly are, but with those pit stops, it looks like right now the strategy was fuel only. I didn't see anybody change any tires, but as Chris said, it is extremely tight down here today. 
37 cars car in, down. so they stayed out there. Car down. Yeah, and John Field bringing the car here. They're going to take a look at this uh, left right, front corner. Totally. He thought the tire was down, but it looks like maybe there's potentially some suspension damage from a uh, little bit of contact out on the racetrack. And uh, the, the tough thing about this team, they run on a little bit smaller budget, so they cannot it's monitor tire pressure. We'll do it here, so grab another, grab one, and we'll do it right here. Talking about a broken camber plate. That's from contact that he made with... Uh, Camper plate's broken, so we'll have to uh, change that. You can actually Give see you a minute. It's going back damage right now here it. where he made side-to-side -side contact with the push-up in the wall down on the downhill over there. We understand the 16 going behind the wall as well. There it is. So their day appears to be done. It'll be interesting to see if they can get him out, back out. If it's a turbo, that may be another thing altogether. Crew going to work on the suspension of the 37. Let's take a look at why we're under caution. Bill Sweedler in the 23 at the downhill. Take a look back here. Oh, and that's where John Field just turns the Porsche. Sweetler, nowhere to go. That's a high speed impact down there. And Bill Sweetler and Romeo Caputia, third in the GTC championship. So disappointing for them for sure, for certain. And that may be what did the damage to John Field's car. That Absolutely. Is, yeah, that's, yeah, that's the damage for sure. And uh, on board with Simon Pagno there, he had a bit of a moment. When you lift off in those high speed corners, it can really unsettle the cars. You know, the American Le Mans series has always been known for its impact on green racing, its desire to go green. And this week, this past week in New York City, they unveiled yet another step in the greening of racing in the United States, North America, and the world all over. In New York City, certainly Corvette was there. The LMP challenges of the G racing or G oil racing. But what about Porsche's well, latest cool entry into green racing? We have the backdrop racing. of New York City. Uh, Rouge Tomat here, which is a very environmentally efficient restaurant. We're talking about hybrids. Uh, the hybrid behind me will be coming to the Petit Le Mans in October. First time that this car will settle on the U.S. soil and uh, a big race to be at. Today's announcement of the Porsche hybrid competing at Petit Le Mans is to date the most significant green racing initiative achievement we've been able to, to announce. So the fact that this has come into reality couldn't be more pleased. I drove this car back a couple weeks ago in Berlin for the first time at the Lautzitz Ring. Uh, I wasn't expecting the fun element of what I had. Uh, the car is so interesting to drive. It's very strategic and when you use the boost um, but also the way that the car brakes is so efficient. Uh, it's charging the system obviously while you're braking and that really helps getting late and deep into the corner. Porsche as a manufacturer I think is has always been one of the benchmark if not the benchmark examples of an auto manufacturer that develops technology on the racetrack and then transfers that technology to the road cars and what we're working with today with this hybrid is exactly that. This is not simply technology to make a better race car. This is developing leading edge high performance technology that is going to soon be applied to the road car product. Um, Porsche right now is a benchmark example with this car of what our green initiatives are all about. Well, we've talked a lot about the five different types of fuel in the American Le Mans series. I got a feeling, guys, we're going to be talking a lot about hybrid race cars in the years to come. We know that the 16 had problem, the Dyson Racing Lola Mazda. Chris, what'd you find out? Well, John Doonan steers Mazda Motorsport in North America. And John, we just saw the 16 get pushed behind the wall. What's what's wrong with the car? Well, it appears, Chris, we uh, lost something internal in the engine. We're not sure yet, but just tough. You know, uh, endurance racing, you got to you got to be around at the end, not these opening laps. Chris had a great start, but uh, you got to be around at the finish to, uh, to bring it home. The team has only finished one of the first five rounds this year. What's it going to take to turn this program around for the second half of the year? Well, the boys back at the engine shop have to uh, put their heads down and, uh, and get some stuff put together. But, uh, you know, we're proud of the, the Castro folks that are here. We're disappointed we couldn't put in a better result for them. And, uh, we had all the Mazda dealers in Texas this week, and they've endured a tough economy, so we're going to uh, try to put our thinking caps on and uh, get after it from here on out. Well, this team has shown so much speed, but they've just got to get to the checkered flag. Even with the struggles that they've had, Chris Dyson was third in the LMP Drivers' Championship points. The car very quick, but like uh, they were saying, you got to get to the end. You've got to. It's frustrating for that team because uh, it's out of their hands, the, the engine development part of that thing. Now that he said something internal, I would guess valves. Dropped a valve. 61, the GT leader now as they flash through the downhill. Johnny Cocker leads the field back. The green flag waves. 
in the green Lola, the V10 in the back of that Lola Coupe leads the field down. Look at Pagano staying driver's right. He got, I think he almost got jumped by GT cars <laughs> coming through the downhill. Wow, what a magnificent start there by Johnny Cogger. He was on the button when he needed to be, timed it perfectly, just as the pace car pulled into pit lane. Big jump at the start there with John Field out of the way. I would think that maybe Simon Pagano can now start to lay down some laps, which are representative of the Highcroft Racing Machine speed. Well, as I said, how crazy it was around here at Lime Rock. When you race here, you know, you get more racing per, per square inch than any other track you're on. Tim Pappas in the 54 Porsche that flashed by, green and white. That was your leader in the GT Challenge category, the Black Swan Racing Porsche, and they have been on a tear as of late, right there in front of the 48. Luke Hines behind the wheel. Luke, the Englishman, not been to Lime Rock before, and I know they had problems with that 48 and the braking yesterday, but they seem to have gotten it sorted out. The car's running well today. Yeah, basically the brake bias. There's a knob inside the car where you can check the ratio of braking percentage front to rear was broken, so they were turning the knob, thinking they were changing and nothing was going on. So that really got me confused. Oh, he is no. the leader. Oh, Parker no. Parker slowed on the racetrack. The five and a half liter. That's the lead. Pagano, Pagano takes the lead. By. Five and a half liter Judd V10 in the back of the Lola, and it seems to oh, have lost either drive or fire in the engine. And Pagano out in front, and uh, more problems on the track. The 40, the Ford GT, and the number 75, the Jaguar. The Ford GT. Oh, no, look at this now. This is the championship leader. Oh, this is huge. The 62 off the road as well. Wow. Jamie Mello behind the wheel, and he is deep into the tires. Differentiate the two Reese cars, the black mirrors of the 62, the orange mirrors of the 61. Oh, boy, this is a big Oh, and you see the smoke off the back of the 40, damage the suspension, that right oh, rear tire right towing rears. out. Broken suspension there for Murray. He's got to be careful. Brett Curtis behind the wheel of the GMG Porsche, the GT Challenge car, the red and black Porsche right there. Suspension, Curtis. Dave, slow right down, damage suspension. Oh, and Cocker has gotten the car refired, so I wonder if it's an electrical issue he with in, the eight. I was just about to say he was in a bad spot on the racetrack when all heck broke loose back there in the GT battles. I think he stayed on the lead lap, guys. Got to wait for everything to cycle, but I think the good news for Cocker is he didn't lose a lap to Pagano. And a big, big problem for the 62, Chris. Yeah, it sounds like I think that car's going to make it back to pit lane, but listening to Jamie Mello on the radio, it sounds like the three car, uh, the Corvette number three, got into Jamie. So uh, I, I don't know if that car is moving. I don't know if you guys can see it in, uh, in your shot. But uh, uh, it, it sounds stuck. like their day is done, guys. It sounds like their day might be done. Well, he's backed up well, into he, the guardrail yeah. for sure, but he's got trouble in the front, too, because he tried to pull forward, and he, he's got the very splittered buried. Look at this mess. Right, here's see the, the first jag. problem. Oh, Murray, Murray gets into a GTC car, turns him around, which gets into the Jag. Oh, and there's the oh. hit. And Mallory wow. just flies off the road there. That is a big impact. Oh, yeah, that's going to be a hurt Ferrari for sure. And if the three got into him, it was a stack-up effect that happened because all this crash was going on up in front of them. Maybe or someone saw the incident slowed up and Jamie just swung it to the outside, just conjecture at this stage till we try and catch it on a replay, but that is big impact. He may just be stuck though, guys. It's really wet out there. They've had a lot of rain well, yesterday. Right here, as you were looking, pointing that before, the car tried to go forward and it just shoveled up all that dirt so it stuck itself. Dorsey, I just checked with the team again, and they say they are done. They can't get the car started out there. They had a starter issue this morning in practice. They changed that starter out. So uh, obviously, it's not the issue with the starter that they had this morning, but for whatever reason, they can't get that car refired. Well, it looks like potentially a tow link on the right rear of the 40, but Jamie Melo, Jimmy Bruni, their championship hopes damage right here. Let's take a look on board the 92 BMW. You see the 62. Down into turn one. Oh, he touches him. He touches him. The Corvette touched Jamie Mello. He had to try and collect it, then gets in the wet grass. Didn't have the braking done, then slides across the racetrack. There was contact there between the lead Corvette and Jamie Mello. Man, a traffic wow. jam down there in turn one. The, the hit was big, but the tire walls down there in turn one, you saw them move. They are banded together, and that is the good news. So I'm not sure how much damage actually done to the 62, but if it will not refire, that is indeed the problem. Under full course caution, 
for the second time. Well, the Michelin Green X Challenge we talked earlier is a vital manufacturer competition within each of the 2010 American Le Mans Series races, and it rewards the greenest prototype and GT team at each event. The race car that goes the farthest, the fastest, and with the smallest environmental impact registers the best score. Follow the competition throughout the season at AmericanLeMans.com. Something tells me that Porsche Hybrid is going to take some of those championships here before long. Maybe we'll see it in 2011. Simon Pagano has inherited the lead. Tom Papadopoulos, welcome back to the series. He leads LMP Challenge. Sunday, NASCAR race day invades Indianapolis, and we're there as David Ruderman, Clint Boyer, and two-time Brickyard winner Jimmy Johnson join us live. We'll look back at Jeff Gordon's dominance at Indy and break down the revived feud between Carl Edwards and Brad Keselowski. Plus, Kenny Waller shows you a side of the Brickyard you've never seen before. NASCAR race day built by the Home Depot live from Indianapolis Sunday at 10 Eastern. And kiss the bricks at 8 Eastern with NASCAR victory lane fueled by Sunoco. Only on speed. It started with two simple words. And now it's time to join in. Announcing the Claim Your Mazda Summer Sales Event. Enjoy the high resale value of Mazda 3, Mazda 6, the driver's alternative to Camry and Accord, or the seven passenger Mazda CX-9. All available with 0% APR financing for 60 months, plus no monthly payments until October 2010. So why compromise? Hurry in and claim your Mazda today. from Nature Valley. 100% natural nuts and granola in bite-sized clusters. It's a little bit of nature, a little bit better. And nature approves. Granola Nut Clusters from Nature Valley. There's an old saying in racing. Start with the best street cars, and you end up with the best race cars. No wonder on any given weekend, more Mazdas are road raced than any other car. Mazda, race-driven engineering, the Zoom Zoom way. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Look closely. This $50 Buffalo gold piece is the first United States coin ever struck using point nine 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 nine. That's four nines, pure 24 karat gold. The U.S. government had to stop production because of a shortage of specially made gold blanks. It's no wonder the price of this edition is going through the roof. Now you can reserve your own copy clad in 14 milligrams of pure gold. The final issue price was to be set at $50 per proof. But now this private non-monetary gold clad masterpiece can be yours for only $9.95. With gold skyrocketing, price can only be guaranteed for seven days. Each 2010 Gold Buffalo Tribute Proof is clad in 14 milligrams of pure gold, is proof struck, and utilizes the famous Buffalo nickel design. Strict limit of five proofs per caller. You must hurry. Call now. Call 1-800-341-3456. Strict limit of five proofs per caller. Call 1-800-341-3456. Wednesday night on Speed and Speed Pride Time, and it's all new at 8. It's the new original stunt riding series, Stealth Rider. And at 10, it's intersections where man and machine are pushed to the limit. Get your heart racing Wednesday night starting at 8 Eastern on Speed. Well, we talked about Green Challenge just before we went to break. We can take a look at the Green Challenge standings as they are right now. Let's go to prototypes first. Right now, Patron Highcroft Racing, they're out in front. E10 powered over the E85 Drayson Racing. Lola with that V10 Judd in the back, and we saw them with their problems. Johnny Cocker behind the wheel. Understand they might have a shifting issue. In the GT category, it's the BMW Ray Hall Letterman number 90 right now. E85 on all top three cars in the Michelin Green X Challenge in the GT category. Talk about GT class, we know that's why we're under yellow for the second time. The problem with the number 62, Jamie Mello behind the wheel of the recent Cup of Ferrari, 
on board the 90 BMW as they head down to turn, turn one. There you see it, Jamie Mellows on the right-hand side of the racetrack as they get down into the braking zone. Johnny O'Connell touches the right front of his car to Jamie Mellows. You can see Jamie trying to maintain control of it. The slices across the racetrack, narrowly missing that LMPC car right there. You see the other carnage up ahead. Hey, Brian, you know when you said it at the beginning of the show, one of the places I wrecked? That was one of them. That was one of the places you wrecked. You saw just, the damage to like the that. right front of the number three as well. Jamie? Well, Jamie Mello was able to get the 62 car back to pit lane. Jamie, what happened down in turn one? Well, basically after the, the caution flag, and uh, I overtook number three Corvette on the straight, and uh, basically he pushed me off the track on uh, break into turn one. And uh, yeah, basically that's what happened. And uh, I'm quite disappointed because that was unfair. And uh, I was I was on my race line already ahead of him, and uh, he just pushed me off. Well, this is going to be a hard day in the championship. They had a two-point lead coming into this race, but the car still sitting here in pit lane got significant damage to the back end, especially the exhaust, and they will not be able to get the Risi Ferrari back into this race. And that is huge indeed because the 45 right now sits second on the racetrack, but anything could happen. Jamie Mello, Jimmy Bruni, two points ahead of York Bergmeister and Patrick Long as we came into Lime Rock Park, and it looks like 75 points is where they will stay if they don't get back out on the track and are not able to collect any more points today. Jörg Bergmeister, Patrick Long need to look at this and say, hey, we want to win races, but let's make some hay while the sun shines here. Yeah, 20 points for a win, and if the 62 machine gets zero points in today, that is a massive swing. You see the BMWs, they're still in this thing. They leave the manufacturers, they have their drivers sitting third and fourth in the points, and they have two very fast race cars here in bright conditions. Simon Pagano leads the field. It's Greg Pickett in the number six muscle of Porsche in second, but he is several cars behind Pagano. Clear sailing to the green and beyond. Looks like Pickett at least five cars back as they come down the front straightaway in the green flag waves. Racing again at Lime Rock Park and Simon Pagano flashes by into turn one. There you see Greg Pickett. He won here in Trans Am, believe it or not, in 1981, 29 years ago. But his first time here in this machine and he didn't get any dry laps yesterday. So you see him there fighting the car a little bit. But the big news for this team is they've kept that car on the lead lap. If Greg can maintain this pace, keep the car on the lead lap, we should see a classic battle when Graf gets behind the wheel today. His no name straight away. Look how what I mean it's crazy trying to Whoa. pass him here. And he hits the he 54. That was the leader in GTC. He was going past that GT Challenge battle. The 54, Tim Pappas behind the wheel, and the 48 of Luke Hines had just got together. And look at the, is that the 45? Indeed it is. Patrick Long working hard to get through. We just talked about that, Calvin. Knowing that the 62 is where it is, how big a chance do you take? Well, Patrick Long's taking big ones right now. Well, he's got a lot of confidence in the car. The car's set up. One advantage they have. Here we see a battle. Same place as the Corvette and the Ferrari got together. This time it's BMW versus Corvette. Down oh, front straight away. And the teammates Come side up. by side. That's Lime Rock. That's Lime Rock. Side by side, pushing and shoving. You got to root your way around this place, and it's tough, I'm telling you. Tommy Milner behind the wheel of the 92 BMW right on board. The 90 of Dirk Mueller right in front. They are having a go at it. It looks like they've got the speed on the Corvette through the downhill. We know the BMW has better Knocking aerodynamics this weekend, improved aerodynamics. Is that what we're seeing at work? Well, they got a bit more downforce on hand. Before, they didn't have enough aero on the front, and they had to balance their car by taking rear wing out. They're able to run more rear wing now. That gives them more, more downforce, more grip, and that really works around line rock. Getting pretty heated between the four Corvette and the 90. BMW, they just had a little bump as they went up the uh, the old uphill. Beretta protecting that line, moving that Corvette to the right side of the road. Understand that the eight car is going to get a stop and hold for 20 seconds for a pit violation. Some type of a pit procedure. They served it back on track on board the 90 with Mueller. And look at the top end the BMWs have over that Corvette. And that's with more drag from the extra downforce, so they look strong still down this straightaway. But I think these Dunlops are really hooked up here today on race day. They really threw some soft tires at it this morning. Spoke to Tommy Miller about 30 minutes before the green flag here today. He said, I think we've got a very fast race car. We're going to decide ultimately on our compounds right by what the weather was at green flag time. Because it was wet yesterday, they can really have a free option in what tires they choose for the green flag in the start of the race. Auburn and Hand finished third in the GT category in the BMW last year. We know that the driver pairings have been switched around this year. That BMW runs well here. I'll tell you what, 
Beretta is a sitting duck. If they can just get by him, they're going to be gone. The BMW seem to be much faster than the Corvette right now. Well, I think he's holding up Dirk Mueller, and Dirk's getting a little bit uh, aggravated, running short on patience, and he's going to uh, move him in a minute, I believe. Beretta to the right side of the track once again. Now Tommy Milner says, well, maybe I can go around the outside. That's not going to work. But right now, two BMWs all over the back of the number four Corvette. Yeah, they just seem to have more grip. Spoke to Danny Vince, who runs the three Corvette this morning. Here we see a prototype car trying to force his way through. Uh, stop and go for blocking on the four car. Yeah, that's so the you need to come to the penalty box. You need to come in to the penalty box. That's the first time I've seen a blocking penalty administrated. Wow. So I didn't really see him weak. Normally you're allowed one move and then hold your position, but they probably feel right now Beretta is just holding up these BMWs too much. And I can assure you that Bobby Rahal and Scott Renfke at Rahal Letterman have been screaming at the officials down in pit lane. It's such a tough call. A blocking call is extremely hard. That's why the penalty is never, you never see it used, but very seldom. Because normally it's got a lot of discussion going on before that happens. I don't think the radio is working very well in Beretta's car. No, he's not going to come <laughs> in is what you mean. It's working. Right now, the 90 Mueller looks to the outside. Nothing doing right there. And you know that the BMW team is scanning race control. They've heard the penalty as well. you got to make sure that Dirk Mueller and Tommy Milner know that that four car is going to be coming off the racetrack. Don't put your car in harm's way if he's going to be moving. He was going to be moving. <laughs> I believe the 90 was getting ready to move the four out of the way because this is frustrating. Still all over the back of him. Beretta still blocking down into that chicane. And oh, like you said, Kelvin, to... tag the tires there, trying to cut across that corner there a little bit, using all of the curves. One of the things with the setup, you need a suspension setup that can really piece the curves through these two chicane areas. Now the question is, well, will the four come in this lap or not? You can usually get two laps of not coming in before they say that they'll stop scoring you. Bobby Rahal looking on, looking at the monitors. Not coming in, boys. Not this time. There you go. Moving to the inside. Good point now because the BMWs are inside of it. Two of them, you heard him say, and both of them slipped through. So Beretta now probably has given up the ghost. He knows he's going to have to come to pit road. It'll be interesting to see how much BMW can pull out from the Corvette. We've had certainly plenty of excitement out there. We said that we would all day long, four classes at the same time. Take a look at Greg Pickett in the white prototype. Slice the inside. He locks the brakes up right there. You can see the right front is locked up. That means he has zero steering and just T-bombs the 54 car that's been on a roll in GTC this year. Here we see it from a different angle. And Greg just got in way too deep. He was not on a good braking surface. Already part of the racetrack. We're on the marbles. The racetrack is very green from all of the rain. 45 getting past the 48. Patrick Long trying Boy. to get past Luke Hines up and over the curb. You got to be careful about the radiators up front. And then we just left that heated battle between BMW and Corvette. I don't think uh, any love lost there. A little tapping going on, a little rubbing. Let's see. Happens right up here. Comes up the inside. Try the oh, yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> That's good racing. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna deal with that all day long at Lime Rock. There will be contact. We read it in the press releases. We spoke to the drivers. Everyone said you can't go through two hours, 45 minutes here without some contact. It's awfully hard anyway. The Ford is coming out after doing a penalty for that. Beretta back on track. We told you it was going to be a heated one, and it is. It is gladiators in the Coliseum. We are far from done, so make sure you come back when we do right after this from Lime Rock Park, the American Le Mans series. The battle continues, and right now, Simon Pagino runs out in front. We'll be back to Lime Rock Park. Wednesday on speed our primetime lineup hits the gas at 8 stealth rider is all new as Jason Britton takes on Philly then paints all out rocks West Palm Beach followed by an all new intersections where man and machine are pushed to the limit get your heart racing Wednesday at 8 Eastern only on speed
this is a Mercedes 280 SE, one of hundreds of thousands of classics we cover. Yeah, all owned by the same billionaire. Actually, the average Haggerty client owns just one collector car. In every country. I doubt that. And he likes his martinis shaken, not stirred. So the average Haggerty client is a... Billionaire secret agent, that's right, it's obvious. You think I'm stupid? There is a rhythm of the seasons, so we've developed styles of beer to accompany that. We brew Oktoberfest, Winter Lager, Noble Pils, and right now, there's Summer Ale. Samuel Adams Summer Ale is a flavorful wheat beer. It has a very nice spice note. It has a little lemon zest and a historic brewing spice called Grains of Paradise. It's citrusy. Lemon. Flavorful. Refreshing. Wow. Sam Adams Summer Ale, it's just something about it. It's like, totally reminds you of Summer Ale. <laughs> The Discovery Channel dropped seven volunteers into a condemned town. Oh, God. Alone. Where am I? They were told there was a biological disaster. There's nothing we can do. Told to rebuild. We die together, we live together. Told to restart. I trust my fellow colonists with my life. We all fought valiantly. And we have fire. fire. If society fell apart, would you? The colony. Beats coverage of the American Le Mans series is brought to you by Michelin, a better way forward. And by Mazda, on any given weekend, there are more Mazda's road race than any other brand. Cars behind the pace car for the third time here at Lime Rock Park, round five of the American Le Mans series. You see the number three Corvette, Johnny O'Connell, sitting still on the racetrack. At the top of your screen, far left, cars coming into view. I think he got helped along there by somebody. It's the 88, one of the GT Challenge cars, Jerry Vinto behind the wheel, on board the BMW. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to say if he did get into him or not from that angle. Now, it doesn't really matter because the damage is done, literally and figuratively. Pit lane is closed right now. Johnny O'Connell out of his car. Jamie? Well, pit lane just opened, Brian, but I just talked to the number three team, and all they said is they know that it's something mechanical with the car. They're not sure exactly what right now. They're trying to get the race, the racetrack officials to get them back to the paddock area on a flatbed so they can dive back in. The cars are filing into the rain right now. The number four car just pulled in. Oliver Gavin is going to climb behind the wheel. This, this team is not happy about that penalty right now. Oliver Gavin had a couple words with the official about it, but he's getting in the car. Nonetheless, Chris Neville. Our GT leaders, the 61 and the 45 in pit lane, going to do uh, driver changes, take this opportunity. Mika Salo is going to get behind the wheel of the 61, and York Bergmeister, the 45. The 45 didn't take as long on fuel because they just came in a couple laps ago, so York Bergmeister already down and away, while Mika Salo still up in the air. And look at the clock there, 159 plus on the board. A driver could not do any more than two hours in the car. That's why you're seeing driver changes right now. They suffice that rule. And for Jörg Bergmeister and Patrick Long, this has been a gift, a problem for the 62, the 3, the 4. All of those cars figure in the championship. That's the good news. The bad news is the BMWs, both the 90 and the 92, are very strong this weekend. It was damaged to the left rear corner of that Corvette. The suspension was buckled. Not a way for Johnny O'Connell to celebrate his birthday here today. Well, under caution yet again, your ride on board the BMWs will take an opportunity to take a quick break. And as we do, I want to say hey to Ed Skotsky down in Florida, one of our biggest fans of the ALMS and one of our biggest fans of the broadcast here. I know you're having a tough time, Ed. Hang in there, buddy. Hope you're doing well. Jaguar Platinum coverage is not just a warranty. It's a belief in everything we do. It's a five-year, 50,000-mile promise. With complimentary scheduled maintenance, no-cost replacement of wear and tear items, and 24-7 roadside assistance. Because when you create the most beautiful, fast cars on Earth, you create an ownership experience to match. Jaguar's best-in-class platinum coverage is included on all 2011 Jaguars. See your local Jaguar dealer for details. In today's cars, there's self-adjusting cylinders, self-deploying spoilers. Why not a self-cleaning engine? Next generation Pennzoil motor oil cleans out up to 40% of sludge. So turn your engine into a self-cleaning engine and feel the clean.
day one storm And it was beautiful So look, see the sights that you like AT&T covers 97% of all Americans This summer get the exclusive Samsung Strive for just $19.99 Only from AT&T I want a home run he wants an out. Only one of us will win. Winning takes intense preparation. Start with Wheaties Fuel, a bold honey cinnamon crunch cereal with complex carbs and B vitamins. Wheaties Fuel, prepare to win. There was a town held captive by an evil gas pump. It fed on people's hard-earned money. But along came the Michelin Man, who reminded them the right tire changes everything. And with fuel-efficient tires in place, that evil gas pump wasn't so evil anymore. Michelin Energy Saver AS tires can help save up to 109 gallons of fuel. Michelin, a better way forward. Attention collectors, Ford has just authorized the National Motor Museum Mint to release this exclusive die-cast replica of the 1948 Ford F1 pickup, the first in the F-series of trucks that became the best-selling vehicles in the world. It has amazing details and parts that move. A regular $30 value, now yours for only $10. Plus, as a free gift, you'll also receive this precision die-cast 1956 Ford F100 pickup. According to many, the best looking Ford pickup ever built. Another $30 value, it's yours free, just for shipping and handling. Don't miss this unique collector's opportunity. Two of the most popular Ford trucks ever both with certificates of authenticity, a $60 value for the special price of only $10 plus shipping and handling. Don't delay. To order your Ford pickups, have your credit card ready and call 1-800-217-3536. That's 1-800-217-3536. Don't wait. Call now. Cause that to happen. Back at Lime Rock Park, cleaning up the mess down in turn one. The problems continue for Corvette Racing in 2010. It looked like at Salt Lake City, perhaps they had gotten back on track. Pardon the pun. But right now, they're on the back of a wrecker and problems for the three car. There you see the suspension damage. You can see it towed out on the left rear. And uh, just spoke to Danny Vicks this morning. He said, we've got to stop making mistakes on and off the racetrack. We've got to get back in the game. We could have won races early. Here we see another replay of the thing. I Johnny think he turns it around, but it's the question becomes did the suspension break yeah, I before think it's broken. It's already broken. I think it so is too. unless he clouded it much earlier in this sequence as they're going down into the corner, then he lost it. That's a possibility. If he was going down the inside, make contact no damage, with that though. I don't see any damage on the outside of the bodywork, so you would almost think that this is a suspension failure. Watch.